Okay, I decided to bring out the gauge here so we can actually get that uh, swamped out and see. Because I guess we're, since we're starting a new engine, we could probably, I'm not sure the DMV will like this though, but, uh, or insurance. We're going to take out the one that has a zero dominant reading and put it back in here. That way we'll have accurate, um, pretty much representation of how long the engine's actually been running. Because this mainly comes down to the engine. I think everything else is pretty much new on the scooter as well. New tires, new everything. Other than the actual Domino reading itself, the cable that goes in there. So this is how we actually remove it. Once you get, remember how I removed this part? So I'll show you actually how to take this off. So you can see here. So if you have an interceptor 150 and also fix the issue too, if you ever have, you know, where a little thing like this, this is a simple fix here where the the negative or this gauge here it's actually it. all you got to do is twist it back around here that's it don't try to go over this bar it doesn't need to be when it springs around here it actually will create a spring again so you have to turn it counterclockwise back up to here and it'll actually you know forcefully go back down on its own magnetize or whatever the case maybe there's a little spring that resets the tape itself back here so don't try to go loop it back up up this way don't go counterclockwise loop go reverse counterclockwise don't go uh, clockwise i mean i'm sorry Okay, so we're gonna get that off as well. We'll need to get both off anyway. You can see the only difference between these two here is uh, everything looks pretty much the same identical. The wiring and everything. See there? The only thing I could think of, this one has a blue wire. See that? that even the same gauge here, they'll never be consistent. This one has a blue wire here. And this guy here has like an almost the same color wire here as the rest of these guys here. So I guess they can use whatever wire is available, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the odometer reading only, but we're going to fix that little gas gauge too as a backup. We'll use that guy as a backup. So these things are pretty expensive. They're like 65 bucks if you buy them. Uh, if you can find them anyway. You can't find them. So I was fortunate to get one available. So I'm going to go ahead and just use it as a backup. But I tried to see if that would fix my RPM. Now that didn't. It actually, it's actually the same. But it's funny though. When I first put it on there, my RPM gauge actually worked. You know, right away off the bat. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and swap it out because I wanted to get the correct odometer reading. But it didn't do me well. So the first thing you got to do is take these four screws out first to remove this whole cluster from the uh, plastic. Uh, I call it the Batman housing. Okay, so we're going to get started here. Remove that guy off. Now, for once, I'm actually indoors doing this for you, so the lighting should be pretty good too. And I'm actually in a sitting position, so that's even more comfortable for me. Um, I forgot to delete some of my old videos from yesterday. That's why I only had a little short uh, three and a half minute left of recording. I didn't realize that, <laughs> so I deleted them now. So I should have quite a bit of time to record now. As long as, and it's actually hooked onto the wall. Uh, I used the Anchor power battery here. I have the Anchor wall charger as well. That thing works excellent. Try not to cover your view here. So I'll get this guy next. They're plastic screws, so you don't have to worry about tightening them like really bad or anything like that. Okay, get this guy next here. He's on the blow. And this little rubber tripod actually works really well on surfaces. Okay. There it goes. And then you can teeter it here. So that I can pretty much pull this guy off now. I think he should be off, right? Oh, <laughs> look at this guy here. He didn't want to get him off. Like, no, I'm not ready to come off yet. Uh, he will be. There you go. Now he, he got knocked out. All right, there you go. See, it comes right off. And there's your housing here. Okay, so once you get this housing off of it, now that we got the little housing off here, the four screws, you can see where it protrudes. Now you can see here, when you turn it around, you can see there's two screws here. See, these two screws are not visible, and you're thinking, how the heck do I open this up? Uh, and they sometimes people think this is actually three independent you know plastic glasses but they're not they're actually one piece you'll see in a little bit because what happens is with this guy coming on top of it you can see here he covers it he covers those little bolt holes so you can't see that there's there's phillips screws on each side watch he'll come closing in see that and you'll never know you'll never know and i'll tilt him to that he doesn't show it here either but you see a little mark here right so that's how i found out uh there was screws there because there's no video of the tutorial on that so if you ever need to change uh, a Zenin uh, 150T-9. Now, in the Italy, they might call it Vesicio or something like that. And then in the in the U.S. and California market, I think it's SSR Motorsports Interceptor 150. They're all the same. Pretty much is from the Zenin scooter. Uh, the actual scooter itself is Zenin, uh, you know, 150-T9. So now we're gonna go ahead and start removing this plate here off the uh, cover. So we're gonna turn this around like this. And you see the screws here, right? So just take this screw out here. All right, 
right, so there we go. That's excellent. That's done. Let's kick out this guy as well. And that's it. That was it. That's the only two screw that actually holds this whole thing. So if you're trying to get something applied to pop it out or internally, don't do that. You'll ruin it. They're all this one solid pass. There he is. Look. Well, you can all see it yet. See there? But watch. I'll push this down so you guys can see it. I think I can push it down. Or it's not, it shouldn't be locked anywhere else. But anyway. Seems like, okay, there we go. See? Then you can take this right here and you can clean it. You know, however you want to clean it. Just don't use any soft abrasive, that's for sure. There you go. That's a little nice invisible line right here, so, so you can just blow the dust off of it or whatever you need to do. Uh, it goes like that. And then you got this little next sheet here. Clam down on it. See that? That makes it complete. Alright, so now we're going to take this guy off. And now we want to just take the... Okay, so the other guy I was just telling you about here, this guy right here. See what happened with this guy here. Let's go and bring him back over. Hopefully you guys can see him in the camera angle. See how he's kind of like tilted downward? What happened was his little thing here got messed up. It went this way. Once it goes that far out, you see that? It dries it down. So that's what happened to him only. So it's not a big deal. Again, some people will say, oh shoot, if it's down like that, then I better maybe loop him over to get him back in this position. You don't want to do that. Go back counterclockwise. Watch when you go back counterclockwise, he'll start coming around on his own. See there? So it's like a little spring mechanism there. So that's how you'll fix this guy right here. That's not even a big problem to fix. So we'll get that squared away as well. <clears throat> you can see how many miles it was on this original Dominator. 3,600, I could say almost close to 70,000. I mean, uh, 3,669. And then this guy here, he's brand spanking new. So you can see he's barely, uh, not even a mile. He's like 0.7 or something like that. So, and he's still, you know, not even there. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swap this Dominator ring for this one. Because again, we got... We got from a 157 QMJ engine now to a 180cc. So it's a brand new engine. Should have a new Adomina reading. Um, well, not really, but I just like to make it that way now. So let's go ahead and take this guy off. And it's a good demonstration to show you anyway. So the only thing that's holding is the Adomina gating here. You can see here, these are all separate pieces now. You can actually get them off separately. But I'm not going to, you know, pry them off. What's holding them is these little two screws. This one holds the RPM. These all these right here holds your fuel gauge as well as your um your battery signal gauge. So that's right there. So we don't want to mess with those. Let me make sure I put these carefully. Okay, so we're gonna take these little two Phillips out. And these two Phillips here is that's gonna kind of one that's gonna take our Domino reading out, okay? And we don't have to worry about the wire harness, keep them the way they are. So there we go. Gonna take out the Phillips. Yeah, I can tilt it this way, you guys can see it better. See there's two Phillips, there's one more hidden over here. I'll take the last one in first. First, there we go. Lefty Lucy, give them a crank open. And they are machine screws, so they're not sharp at the end, okay? These, none of these screws are gonna be sharp at the end as well as these ones. They're not gonna be sharp at the end at all. They're not like these plastic screws. Uh, they're not like these right here. See how they're sharp, huh? See how they're sharp at the end? They're not gonna be like these guys. So these are more like plastic screws. Plastic screws have sharp at the end because they need to dig through the plastic or wood screws, let's say. But these are machine screws because they actually have to tie into a, a mechanic. So they're like, they call them machine screws. They're more flat headed. They're perfectly, and their spacing is different too. There you go. He's about to almost come off. I guess I'm holding him in place. All right. So he's loosely doosy erased. There it goes. He's loose. Now all he is is going to knock off right here. I got one in my hand. This one's following him. There you go. I got two. You can see here they're flat. They're not sharp at all. And don't worry, you can't really cross-reference it too much. You know, if you look at all the screws that we actually took out so far, got two of the machine screws. I call them machine screws. Two of the silver ones. They're almost identical in color. Okay, we got two. Oh, let me line them up like this so you guys can see it better. Okay, here's our machine screw for our Domino reading cluster. And there's our machine screws for the two sides here. That was from the back side here. These guys right here. We got another one over there. And then we got these four here for the bat, <laughs> the Batman, uh, the cover, the Batman, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> the Batman uh, skeleton frame. So those four right there came from some of these guys here and need to be mounted in the bottom like this to hold these guys in place. Or 
somewhere like this way. Yeah, there we go, sorry. They were to fill a hole like this guy. So there you go. So that's not that many. And you can see here a clustered of screws now that we've collected. So they're right there. So here we go. We're going to keep on continuing on. So now we got that off. It's very simple now. All you got to do is watch. You'll see the mechanism here. I'll turn it over so I don't spill it over anywhere. Let me go and turn this over over here and knock the screws out from behind me like an oxtail. There it is. That's our old down there reading. That's all there is right here. Look at that. It's almost like one of those little stamps, huh? You can see a little light up bolt there on this side and that side. And you can see all the little bolts protruding that lights up the indicator. See, all those are bulbs. They're the one that lights up all these guys here. One, two, the brake light, the signal light, the high beam light. You can see their bulbs right there. See that? And then on the back of it, of course, there's a the little harness there. Now, these aren't cracked. They're made that way. When you take them out, you're able, you're able to split them open and then take your wires out with the bulbs. So that's how these are guys are. Uh, now these ones are differently, they're inserted. So these guys right here, the whole wires come off with it. Let's see if I can take one off so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oop, this one's hard to tug, I'll just leave it then. Well, maybe we'll tug the other one. Just want to force them out. You can, these are for your gas meter, and this is for your, um, I'm sorry, am I right? Gas, well, this is, might be your battery, sorry. Battery, and this is your gas meter here. So let's go back here. Again, when you assemble them, sometimes you might accidentally like, even the same thing with this guy here. Well, you might not go all, okay, here, look at that. See, he can fall all back down. So the minute he reaches a little tipping point, there's a little spring that helps him go back the other way as well. Same thing with this guy here. See that, he can go as far as he can before his spring says, okay, I can't go anymore. I have to go out the other way. And he will force himself to go the other way. Oh, my gas is going down really quickly. I haven't even been ridden. <laughs> so there it goes. And you got your two little bulbs here. These guys are to help light up the place. Okay, so we got this aside. Let's go and put this guy here aside now. Let's go and open our new setup. Uh, again, they're not that hard to remember which screws came to where. Just remember then the black one goes to the Batman, you know, face. We can put these aside. These ones won't be interchanged. They belong there. And then they got machine screws that are flat. See, there's no sharp at the end. And these guys here go on the two sides. So there's not really much to remove these gauge cluster and clean out the glass. So that's what we're wanting to do, just clean out the glass. You can take that off. We'll get our microfiber cloth in a second. Okay, same thing we're gonna do with this guy here. Okay, let's go and leave his odometer reading. Now you can, I just wanna give you guys a close up of the reading. You can see there. It's not that hard. And when it spins this, it starts, you know, ticking the numbers here. Look like there's some kind of magnet or something there. That, there's the odometer. It's a little square peg there, that a cable, square cable that goes through it. Look how it resets. Can you imagine if you had your scooter 814,000 miles? I don't think it even goes a, a million miles, really. I think uh, not even goes over 100,000 miles, to be honest with you. Yeah, it doesn't even read up to 100,000 miles. Probably, the most it'll probably read is 99,999. 9, 999 nine maybe there i think that's it that's the highest it goes it, they can't imagine the scooter actually rides more than nine thousand miles but hey let's see if it, we can get over a hundred thousand miles right i'm sure we will i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of parts to replace in the meantime but yeah that's good to know right there so let's go and get this guy open now same situation you see he has his four four bolts here for his batman but that's already pre-taken out uh, no, actually, there's no Batman cover on him. He's just his housing. So we're ready to go ahead and take these guys two out because they're exposed now. So let's do this guy. This one might be loose already. There we go. I think this one's kind of might be stripped a little bit, so I got to be careful. Yeah, I think he is kind of stripped. He's like wanting to come out, but he's not wanting to come out. If he doesn't want to come out, we'll have to go from the side like this. Try to back him off slowly. There he is. And try to ply him a little bit. Because the more you put pressure forward, he wants to drive back in. So we don't want him to do that. Okay. Try to do it by hand, sort of like feeding him out. Like walk him out. There we go. There we go. One of our plastic screws. You can see they have the sharpness to them. 
and then we have one more side to go and that's it and then two machine screws there we're done we're just going to swap them together and I, like i said again i don't know why the rpm worked initially when we first put the brand new gauge in there it worked right away the only thing i did different was swap out the odometer reading because i wanted to go back and get the the real odometer reading when the bike actually first took off but like i said again since we replaced the engine and everything it makes sense to actually reset the odometer reading right because it's a brand new engine uh, even though it's a rebuilt kit, but it's mainly all the parts are brand new. Okay, so there we go. We can clean these glasses up. Got to give it protection. It has a little gunk underneath or over our camera. Okay, so it's hard. This is plastic. Don't want to scrape it too much at all. See, it still has a little phase part. Okay, so there we go. We got that there. We'll set this aside. All these little components here. We got, we got a full load of it right there. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy here almost ready to roll. You guys got a good shot of him. Down the readings, pretty much zeroed out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that one. I don't know how to really reset it from inside. I'm sure you can, but I probably don't want to deal with that. Not knowing, uh, you know, what it might not work again. I'm sure it's just a matter of spinning those things. I even try to spin it reverse the cable. But I'm not sure I really tried. But I'm sure you might be able to reverse your donor read. I'm not even sure that's legal though, so I can't really advise that. Okay, so here we go. Definitely if you're not if you're selling the car, you know, you can't reset the donor reading to tell people it's zero mileage when you know half the car is falling apart. <laughs> so here we go, we got that guy in there. Alright, there we go. I just want to make sure they're loose. This guy needs a little bit more. He's still kind of stiff on there, now. he's loose. Loosen a little bit more. There we go. Pull him out. This guy will be knocked out here. He'll come out eventually. There we go. All right, so we got two machine screws and two plastic screws from the new guy. All right, so he's the same way. Oh, yeah, let's go and fix this guy here. Remember that? There it is. That's fixed now. How hard was that? Okay, let's go and take out this new odometer. There we go. We got the new odometer out. All right, so let's go and put this guy over here. We're going to swamp, put the new odometer ring with the new, you know, gauge cluster harness and everything. So all this right here is new, so it should have worked, actually. All we did was swamp out the odometer reading. So we're going to go and put things back to where it was. That's how it originally was. So we go. that in there like this all right so we're gonna go and get this guy screwed in a little bit harder now because you have to actually come from up top and try to fiddle around I'm not sure it's magnetizable enough where I can hold this guy in there but I'll try maybe no not if not then you'll have to finger it in there somehow especially when you got a bunch of wires in the way shouldn't be too bad let me see if I can get them in first. There we go. And then once you get them into a little slot somewhat, you can use your screwdriver to straighten them up and before you tie them down. There we go. Nice. That wasn't too bad. Let me get out of the way. All right. Before I tie them all the way, I want to go ahead and get the other guy ready too. So I think he's not. I think he's in or not in. I can't. Okay, there he is. It is tightening. So I didn't want to tighten them all the way yet. Let's get the other guy in first or next. There he is. He's in from up top to screw them so it won't be in your way he's going down there we go let me just give him a little snug all right let's get this guy a little snug you want to snug it because vibration alone will probably take it off that's why actually these guys here hey they actually have washers believe it or not i couldn't believe it well i guess the other one had washers this one doesn't yeah they had little washers i'll show you Little lock washers, not just washers. Little lock washers. Couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow. There we go. Since he's pretty new, he doesn't have really have some good grease yet. We'll make sure we'll put some, uh, you know, what we'll call it, molly graphite grease or something, or just to make sure he has a little bit of grease there. I got some lithium grease in there. That was for the throttle cable. That's a different story. But we can use the same here because these guys are not the one that's stripped. Uh, well, they're not the one that's causing the strip. It was just the plastic housing of that other one there. So you can see here, there it is. 
new aldometer reading for our new gauge cluster versus our old one, which is 3,669 and ticking at two. This guy here is, you know, zero mileage, just barely coming up. He has his little between his six and seven. And then um, we're going to, I'll show you the, pretty much the washer here where this guy came from. So this is probably going to be part of our alarm wiring troubleshooting signal. Okay, so again, this the only difference is how our original one had the blue wires, or somewhat. So this guy here doesn't have the blue wire. There you go. This is our original one here. It had like the blue wire harness, which is kind of awkward. But I just want to show you, it also has a, a washer. You see that? They have little washers in them. Yeah, little lock washers. You see that? It's gapping it because of the lock washer. Let me see if we can get it right. There you go. See that? That's lock washers right there. Isn't that crazy? Some of them have them. I think majority. This one has it. This one has it. This one has this one. The only one that didn't have is this one. You know, it's just probably random, whatever they had. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much how it is. And then this is the, again, the RPM gauge cluster here. I'm not sure what happened there. But, I mean, we could take it open and take a look at it further, investigate it. But I probably recommend not to. In fact, you know what I'm, I'm trying to do? Let's not even put the cover in there and let's go test this out, shall we? Um, let me go ahead and make sure I got everything. We'll bring that one as well. Let's bolt that on as well because we're going to go and test it out without the little, you know, there, we don't need the window to make sure it works or not, right? The window's just there to cover dust. Okay. And, you know, rainproof it. All right. Let's go and put this guy back in. So now he's back to his original everything, the harness and all. So let's go ahead and... Okay, there he goes. Let's go and put his machine screws in there as well. And we'll bring both of them out there and we'll do a test to see if we can get the RPM working before we put the cover on there. I don't think the cover is going to matter why the RPM doesn't work, nor will it stop us from making the RPM work. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is tighten it down. Let's just tighten little by little. As long as I get in the groove, I'm careful not to cross thread it because I'm actually in the angle here that I cross thread it. So I gotta be careful. Okay, so I'll do this. Make sure they're straight up and down. Oh man, this is tight already. There we go. It's bringing them in. It's bringing them in. Because what you want to do is you want to look at this to see if it actually closes. Sometimes not closing properly, and then you try screwing the back of it, and then it's going to start, you know, giving you problem cross threading. So it should go in pretty smoothly. You know, there's not shouldn't be that much resistance at all. These things are, you know, are tart. And another thing I was thinking too with the carburetor, I think it's better to use a thumb flat screw head instead of a long one, even though the long one gives you leverage. You actually can almost twist the bolt a little bit more. With the longer one not knowing that you're over torquing it or over tightening it like trying to close it so i recommend you actually get a little smaller screwdriver because i felt like when i was using a small screwdriver i knew my finger cannot be so forcefully trying to make it further you know close on the air fuel mixture and the throttle so that's another good pointer i would think to look out for when you're doing with the long flat head thinking that oh well you know it's so easier now i can you know do my tuning from you know the side of my scooter which i know in some instances you can't right because there's no top access like i have where i could take the seat cover off and then you get top access so anyway this one's already done so let's go ahead and bring this over here before we uh put down the brackets let's go and test these bad boys out outside so let's go and bring them out there now okay we got the gauge cluster out here let's go ahead and mount well we're gonna need only one at a time right so let's do the one that we just replaced uh zeroed everything out oh, oh, oh. So you happen when you hold things with one hand. Okay, let's go and put this guy on here. And let's see. Yeah, he's not gonna be sitting pretty, of course. <laughs> but we wanna make sure his RPM is actually wound up. All right, it's connected the RPM side of the gauge cluster. He's connected his own internal wire harness. I don't even know why they don't just make the whole thing complete, right? But they put a little junction there. I guess maybe it goes bad off enough. But that's interesting to note. Okay, let's go ahead and put this guy Connecting wise to his little appropriate slots here. Shouldn't be too hard. 
that's it. And then this last one here. Doesn't feel like it's going in, but it's supposed to. All right, so here we go. Do we have the original? Well, huh? Uh, by Yim Dang Dai. Okay, so there we go. We got the lights and everything coming on. You can see the battery level just turn. Now uh, this is, again is without the the uh, help. So we're gonna go ahead and start the scooter up. We're gonna hold the brake because we have to now, unfortunately. And now we can actually hold our left hand brake. No problem there. So we're gonna go and try fire up the scooter and try to get the RPM uh, to hey, read or not. So let's find out. There we go. There we go. So we're gonna go fire it up. You see that I push the brake lever, squeeze it. You hear that blanket lever coming on, so here we go. I'm gonna push the button. Kill switch is on. The manual choke is on. Now let's go and see if the RPM actually moves or not. So the RPM is not moving, but let's see if we can force it to move. <laughs> we can always force it to move, but it's supposed to move on its own. So let me try rev up the RPM again. Okay, so it's still not there. See that? All right, so that means let's just say this gauge cluster is still not acting up well for us, even with this original setup and with the speed odometer reading at zero. So let's try the new gauge. Uh, well, not try a new one. Let's try to see if we, you know, tapped into the other gauge cluster. So we'll open it up and look at the, you know, why is it acting up that way, even though it's a brand new setup. It worked initially like it always does. So it might be a wiring continuity issue with it, but we'll see. I think we had it always connect or disconnect, I can't remember. Let me, see if I can, let me see if I can disconnect it and reconnect it back. That might be a possibility, but very slim. Either works or doesn't work, right? Okay, there we go, I got disconnected. Okay, let's go ahead and start again. Hold down the brake lever. Oh, have the kill switch come on. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our throttle. Okay, let me try to connect it in the process of it trying to stabilize. Oh, look at that. Holy shit. You see that? I connected in the process of it. Now here it goes. I'm gonna tug it. Look at that. Is that weird? Look at that. Look at the RPM. Is that weird? It worked. I guess you have to connect and reconnect it. I, it's sad to say that because I want it to work right off the bat, so I'm afraid that there's no way I keep on reaching my hand in there. Even with a downforce, even with a downforce of gravity, let's say. I gotta stabilize this so I can see it. Okay, there we go. So it's about one, one RPM. I'm uh, flat, uh, none car thing, yeah, you flat. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and RPM it. I'm gonna give it some throttle. It's kind of funny, right? Okay, let's do this again. Come on, stay over here. I guess maybe I need some more flexibility in the cable. The vibrations cause it to fall. Watch, it's gonna fall again anyway. Okay, but here it goes, look. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so it works. You can see there. Now I'm going to go and try to stabilize it again. See that? All we did was connect and reconnect it again. Maybe that's what it takes for it to initiate again. I don't know. But we didn't do anything different than having it start and initiating. So let me see if I can lock it. Or just kind of tilt in a way where it's not going to fall easily. Because we're just focusing on the RPM gauge, right? So I guess our RPM gauge is going to work. But it's funny because it's when you first, you know, I guess install everything. But we're going to start brand new. We're going to take out the keys. And then we're going to put the key back in. Okay, we got it turned on now. So there we're gonna go and try to see if we can start again. And this time, let's see if the RPM will show. One, two, three. I'm gonna hold down the brake lever. Is that in the box? Okay. That one's in the box. In the bag. Right here, one in the bag, one on the ground. Okay, so we're gonna go hold down. You see when I push down the brake lever, it's ready to start. There you go, fire it up. Okay, then I'm gonna go and tug the throttle cable. And let's see if the RPM's working again. It should work. See that, it's climbing. See that? It's going between the, 
1500 2000 rpm there's 3000 it's amazing isn't it so it's still working so there you go we kind of fix our rpm issue so if you do have this kind of issue again maybe you're like me you just gotta disconnect this wire and reconnect it while it's on maybe what it does is sends a signal pulse say hey look wake up man we just got started so there you go that worked our dollar reading right now it's at zero 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 like we never even started the scooter and unfortunately and maybe what we even do with this old one too let's just check it out let's try to see if this gauge cluster is also going to work the same route so let's go and disconnect this guy here even though our gas is barely empty so let's go ahead and put this guy here let's go and disconnect this guy and so that's weird we learned something again would never expected that you know connecting a wire and disconnecting it during the time it's the plugged into this thing here will make it work right but that's yeah. just interesting and we were about to rip that other guy apart and do all that connection there so luckily we didn't have to do that okay so now it's coming apart so let's go and take this off to the side this is our pretty much our brand new setup here zero mileage then we're gonna put this guy in here all right so let's go like this all right so this guy is still connected here right so we're gonna leave him alone we're gonna leave him connected here and now we're gonna do is kind of touch the wire here close it up let's try this guy again see if he will work now we also fixed the other guys as uh, well we fixed the, the gas meter in this one all right, so here we go. We'll prepare to, if we need to, disconnect this guy here, but we're not yet. We're gonna fire it up and see where he stands. See if we get the RPM to also rave up. And that will be completing our troubleshooting of our RPM gauge if this guy also works the same route. Okay, this is the one with the original 3,669,000 okay. miles on the odometer. Hold the brake lever, push the start button. I'm holding the brake lever here. The light's lighting up there. Oh, look, look at that RPM worked right away. Yeah, he really worked right away. So our RPM is probably truly sitting at about, oh, well, gravity. Look how gravity holds. See that? Gravity does play a little bit of force. But you can see there, he's like, he's almost between 500 RPM right now. I'm going to grab him up to 3,000 3, RPM. Ready? Okay, now it's not. Now it's kind of like not working. Uh, let me see if I can stabilize him. Probably it's an intermittent issue with this guy's. Okay. Okay, see that? Let's go and disconnect him here. You can see something funny happening to the lights on the bottom too. And I'm, I'm plugging him here. Okay, watch him. There we go, I plugged him back. All right, let's go and rave up the scooter. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. See that? It's just an intermittent issue. Uh, probably has to do with the connection and the wires or whatever. Uh, that's a result right there. Okay, I killed the engine. I think what's going to happen is we might want to make sure for some reason these guys here, maybe they get crunched or something inside. And that's probably maybe what's causing it. See, so you can see here, look, I'm flexing it. I can even almost control the signal blinker, look, by just flexing this guy here. So anyway, these guys have a habit of going bad easily. See that? It's constantly on. And all I'm doing is just flipping this switch here or flicking the wires. Look at that. See that? Well, maybe it's just the whole harness, actually. My bad. I might be rocking this guy, too, really. So it might not be this right here, this area. So I'm trying to isolate it by just wiggling this area. And it's not doing it. But the minute I wiggle this whole thing right here. See that's right here. Or I wiggle this whole thing. See that whole light. So something has to do with short or something like that. So now we know our gauge cluster is fine. Uh, we could keep our original one on there, but I prefer to just go ahead and get the zero down the reading. And put that guy on there so we kind of know how long the, the engine's actually mileage driven on this guy because we don't think we actually took him more than less than 50 miles really. 
So we'll swamp this guy back on this one. I'm gonna put him on a new housing. So pretty much assembling is the same process, put everything back on there, wipe everything down. So I'll go over there and show you. All right, we brought him back in. So what we're gonna do now is actually get ready to clean them up. So um, these things are pretty much, they're fairly decent, but you can still get your microfiber uh, cloth and just kind of wipe it if you did have a little smudge. I kind of like them because they're kind of like reverse Indiglo. You know how cars actually have to pay extra to get the white knockout instead of having the black normal and with the white lettering. Ours is reverse, it's white knockout with the color uh, lettering. So it's kind of neat. So I call it reverse Indiglo. All right, so it's something different, right? But scooters are pretty common. Actually, no, some scooters still have that. Oh, sorry. Some scooters still have actually black, um, you know. Most of them still do. They have just the black uh, housing, really. They don't even have the Indiglo here, so it's kind of neat to be able to get that, actually. So let me make sure this gets stabilized. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of start wiping things down. So let's go ahead and take this guy, too, as well. See if there's any fingerprint smudges here. We could try wipe it down. I wouldn't use any kind of chemical spray on these things, who knows? Because, you know, you can definitely use brake cleaner to take out any kind of paint, almost, from any surface. We took out paint easily from, you remember how we wrote D1, D2? I just sprayed it with a little bit of that brake throttle air body cleaner, and the permanent marker just went away real quickly. Not this one here, but the other one, the same thing. Uh, so we're going to put these guys aside. And see this right here? You definitely want to use a scrub or anything like that. I mean, they're, even though the hard water spots and stuff like that. So just do your best here. Just kind of smudge it. Let's see which one you're going to take. We'll probably use the best of the best out of the, the whole setup here. This price, this one looks better than this guy here. Look at this guy here. He looks like he's really smudged up, right? Again, probably, probably because we got a little brake fluid on him. See that? Look at that. He looks, see him if I wipe him? That scrape, <coughs> harsh abrasiveness <coughs> did not come off. So I might even try to buff him out. So we're probably not going to use this guy. We'll save him as a backup. So let's go and put this guy aside. This one, even though it has hard water stain, it's probably better out of two anyway. It just has a little bit hard water spots on it. Oh, he, just, 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 he just keeps on wanting to go and kiss that guy. All right, so let me do this real quick here. Let me get this all positioned. Give me one second here. Take a few pictures, huh? All right, so let's do this. Let me go ahead and just get this in the up arrow. These legs are great. I mean, they definitely will stand, but they sure are pretty stickler to us. <clears throat> yeah, they will split open too, so that's a good thing. There you go, I think they'll stick now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is try to keep getting getting all cleaned up here. So like you see here, there's still a few spots here, but it's still better than the other one. So we'll keep this guy here as our primary one. Even though we can clean them up a little bit. Now that you got open, you can go underneath there, get a little dust area there, and just wipe it clean. Because if you don't wipe it clean, it's gonna fall back onto the glass. Even though it's plastic, it's just gonna create a little bit will work to remove it again anyway. Again, you cannot remove these easily until you take out that whole front panel. So we, I mean, taking it off the gauge cluster, that's no problem. But taking the gauge cluster off the front panel, that's gonna require a little bit more stuff. So we might as well get, get done now. Now, before we even nail it on there, we'll make sure we'll disconnect it, make sure the RPM is working before we close everything up. Uh, I mean, before we close the whole front panel, you know what I mean? Because last time we closed it while it was still in that condition, it stayed in that condition. It didn't really correct itself and got the RPM gauge to work. It's just weird that why the RPM will work when we reconnect and disconnect it like it wakes up or something, like a sleep mode of some sort. So, I don't know. Maybe it's still an intermittent wire issue that we're having, even with the new one, you see? That's surprisingly, right? So, maybe it's just a faulty manufacturer's defect that they have that those RPM gauge clusters just not stay uh, solid in there because I guess maybe because the way it's wired maybe it's so sensitive so that's not a good thing for us nor it oh which one you're going to use okay so we're going to get ready let me go and stack these guys up a little bit here now it's time to clean their glass part glass part same way I use my microfiber I try not to use any chemical on it because chemical just makes the whole you know the whole area here see this right here dusty that's all you just gotta wipe it off this microfiber captures the dust anyway. Let's go 
have a good wipe. Clean our gauge cluster nice. I believe this is the newer glass because you can tell, memory we had the other harsher mark, which you'll see in a little bit. So you see this little watermark spark. Unfortunately, I cannot get them off, so I'm just doing my best here. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Yeah, it's not coming off, and I don't want to use any harsh chemical. But if you can't really rub them off, there's not really much you can say he'll come off on his own or anything like that. Alright, so there we go. Just got to clean as much as you can with your cloth. Just get all the dust, that's all you can get out of it. Alright, so he's good to go. He's going to probably be assembled onto our new gauge cluster with this Aldama reading 000. So let's put this bad boy back here. Notice here, I'm just sorry, the battery's going low on me. I had to connect it back to the charger again. We have about 64 minutes of recording, or 54 actually. I think that's plenty of time. Um, I'm going to go and try to put a little bit of water here. Maybe just get a little bit of water, just a little bit. My drinking water here. There we go. It's kind of ran through here, but it's still. So I'm going to get a little bit moisture. Maybe I can get that little spot out. We'll see. Okay, here we go. There we go. Just kind of rub them from the inside. And rub them from the outside. That's what WD-40 normally does too. It's just water displacement kind of deal. But you notice I'm using a microfiber cloth because I don't want to scratch it. So there, it's not really coming off. You guys can probably see it still. Let's see. There you go. You can see that little visible kind of ghost. <laughs> He's still there. See that? He's still there. You can see him next to the pinhole. Right there. So yeah. There's nothing I can do. That's pretty much it. It's a sort of a plastic glass, so it's not like a glass where you can scrape off. Definitely don't want to use a razor blade. Glass, you might be able to clean it with a razor blade, but not plastic. It'll leave a scratch, it's just like anything else, aluminum and everything. But a little water damp doesn't hurt. It'll help you even stick the dust a little bit more to your cloth so you can get a little bit more of the surface rub. Okay, so now that it's ready, I don't want to touch the inside, so all my fingerprints on the outside, which I can go back and you know, clean back up before I actually put the secondary mask on there. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this guy here. Why don't we seal one first and we'll start on the next one. That way this one's out of the way, right? So let's do this. Again, I don't want to really go back and touch my own fingerprint. So I'll just use another cloth to hold it like this while I continue on cleaning. There we go. Try to get to the back. And then also maybe it's a good time if you see any wires protruding or bulbs right here, like this guy here. Go ahead and pull, force them in. Because there's no reason for them not to go in anymore. They don't have a reason to stay out and hang out here. And you can see they go in pretty easy once you give them a little thumb push. Make sure all of them are sorry, make sure all of them are pushed in, smacked in, though that they're flush against the plastic. And you're good, see? Now they can be a little stiffer sometimes because they've been here for a long, long time. All right, so I'm gonna hold this guy real quick here. Just hold him right here, really. All right, try not to touch any of the plastic now. I'll even put it down. I'll trace it over, just to make sure I get every bit of the dust off from every angle. And he's good to go. He's ready to get his, um, not his Batman cover yet, but his Batman mask, how about that? We won't put his Batman cape on yet. <laughs> I don't know how else to separate the two. Okay, let's go ahead and get this guy clean. He was the other one here. See with the water. Well, actually, we did clean him up. He was better than the other one we talked about. So he's the one that's going to get to the zero mileage one. He's he's going to be our newest addition here. So we got to clean him up really well. Get him in. I think we got him through all the dust area right underneath here. See, he's fairly new. You can see almost the mold that came from the factory. So he's definitely nice. He's new as new can be. A little crit area here. You get your towel in there and try and work in that little area if you want to. Just try. He'll be covered up a little bit with the back cape, but you know, if you know it's there, you might as well clean it as much as you can, right? A little crit area. If you need to get a little cute swab, yeah, I might have one from being in, being inside. I always use this to clean my ear, so it's still pretty fairly new. So you can just take that and just kind of bundle it in there. Clean all the little, there it goes, see it's gone. All the little hard to get corners there, the plastic. Because you don't want to use any scraper, right? <clears throat> so that's it, it's ready. 
Again, if you're going to touch this, try not to touch so much of it. Especially the areas when you have it concave, it's going to be harder for you to clean. So you want to get the final wash in the thin areas here. That's going to go. All right, so there we go. Ready to go and bring this guy back down in here. Nice, look at that. Okay, he's, he's ready. Almost ready. All we got to do is bolt him down, so let's do that. All he needs is his little two amigos. These two silver ones, silver bullets. All right, so they're going to be driving from forward. See a little crit area here. Probably want to clean that guy too. It just seems a little dusty in this, around this corner here. There we go. Just give him a little clean. Nice. That is clean. Let's put the screw back on. Oh, well, before we do that, let's make sure our gas gauge and everything are over the little hump because if it falls down again, once we put the screw in there, we're not going to be able to get access to it and correcting it, right? So you want to make sure it's properly there. I think everything is properly in place now. All right, so there we go. We got this guy in here now. Kind of screw him. All right, there we go. This is almost tightened. I don't want to over tighten again until I get the other side real quick. There we go. And you don't over, want to over tighten them, period, because it's going to happen to strip like the other guy, right? So let's get this guy here. Now we can tighten them a little bit better. And knowing me, I always like to make sure I do it incline, but in this case, I might not want to push my luck because this is what I was saying here, get all the little crits area and stuff like that where you won't be able to get. Okay, we got that there. And I think we nailed it now here. Yeah, I was gonna say I won't push my luck on there trying to screw this guy. No, I like the things have things crisscross perfectly. Maybe, let's why now. I hopefully I don't strip this new guy as well. Oh, okay, there we go. Barely. How about that? I got him to where I want him straight. In fact, he could actually move a little bit back for us, but that's fine. I'm leaving him alone. All right, let's do the same thing with this guy here. We're going to now tighten him down. I can probably go a little bit more half around. That's it. This, so you guys, hopefully you guys can see it. Almost another quarter turn. There we go. That's it. See, I'm, I, I get, I got straight where I want him to. See that? Look how he's like a plus sign, perfect plus sign. This guy's a perfect plus sign as well. So both ends are perfect plus signs. All right, that's just my preference, but you don't have to push your limit there. And sometimes you might take a chance of stripping, like I did the other one. Probably that's probably what the other one stripped. It's because maybe I pushed my limit there, or push its limit. All right, so there we go. Get that cleaned out. The last final wipe here is pretty much to put the Batman cape on. I call this the Batman mask. The black lining goes in it. That's his mask. And now he's going to get his whole cape on here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the cape on. There's the cape. This is the whole Batman cape. Almost like a, another extension of the mask, right? All right, so there we go. Now this one here... You'll have to flip him around because you need to get to the other side and bolt the four screws. And he only comes in a certain direction. You can see his little flower pattern here. He's not going to be able to come out to the other one. All right, so there we go. We got this guy here. All right, so there we go. Now what we're going to do is kind of bolt these two. Okay, so what we're going to do is bolt. There we go, we got one bolt. Now I'm going to go diagonal still, you know it's plastic. The reason why is I don't want to put pressure on one corner. So I'm going to go ahead and get the diagonal side here. And they take the same screws, the four screws that we have remaining. Those are the same plastic screws. They're identical, I mean. Okay, I'm not gonna bolt it tight yet just to make sure they're holding each, supporting each other. Let's go start with the next leg. And over here you can wipe with, you know, I should have wiped it down, but I don't think there's really not to wipe. I think we clean it with the rest of the body fixture, right? So, that's it, that one. 
and then the next one and then we're gonna place this we're still testing our alarm though our alarm still hasn't worked properly yet now we have another issue the brake lever is not being indicated so the last time the remote alarm did work but we had a tie strap on the brake lever so that's not gonna do it for us right okay i don't want to squeeze this guy too much because i see like he wants to come out the other end of the plastic you can see here watch look at this end right here he looks like he's he's creating a little pimple right there he looks like he's about to burst out so i don't want to do that too bad but i still this one still hasn't yet it's still a little bit lighter next time maybe we can put a little bit smaller screw perhaps i don't know but i think over time they're eventually going to get tight anyway but i'll still face him to be a positive symbol so let me go one more turn that's it Positive symbol from this reference here. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with this guy. He looked like he's already there. <laughs> there we go. Positive symbol there with him as well. And let's go for this guy, positive symbol. Looks like one more round. Almost there. Uh, maybe a, a little bit slight turn. There we go. Positive symbol with him as well. So here we go. There we go. Pause the symbol right there as well. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's check this out. Okay, so we got this guy here. We got him all figured out. So this is it. This is the final product right here for the gauge cluster. He's connected here, but eventually we might have to reconnect him and disconnect him. For whatever reason, maybe this is a little intermittent issue here, but we'll know. All right, so here we go. Okay, I have about 43 minutes recording. I'm not sure why I may have 44% in battery level. That's why it probably shut down on me. That's okay. It doesn't stop us from cleaning. All right, so here we go. This is a great backup here. We can save it for a backup clean all that little dust look at all the little i don't know what those are little scraps of probably plastic bits all right but anyway they're clean now so get all the little grooved area these are great for backup so you always again i bought this hoping that the rpm will work but it found it was the same intermittent issue had to do with pretty much our gauge cluster wiring, perhaps the harness uh, to, the, to the main scooter, let's say. I don't know for sure, <clears throat> but we'll find out. You can see there's fairly new stuff. You can still see some of the, the new marks there. Now, not not much as the other one, but it's still there. So I'm gonna try to get my microfiber cloth way deep in there. Get all the little dirt spacks, spaticles out, I mean. See right here, there's not much I can do. This kind of, I call it mechanic fingerprints. <laughs> Unfortunately, try and get those guys cleaned out. All right, so there you go. That's where it came out. In fact, you can almost lay this guy on top of this guy and then put the other guy on top of him. Stack, stack, you know what I mean? So let's go and rub this guy here clean. Make sure there's no extra fingerprint that we are closing up on. All right, so there we go. Now, Okay, I'm not sure why my battery keeps on, or not battery, but my phone keeps on dying. We're in the nice, cool uh, indoors. Uh, 42 minutes, still recording time left, it says. So anyway, it's already clean, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble it now. Again, let's go and lift this up. Hopefully, we can grab the little glass piece on top. And there we go. There it is. That's it. You can see here the hard water stain still has effect on this right here. See, that's from the brake fluid. So you can see, compared to this guy here, how much more nicer this guy is brand new with his little plastic see there it's much more cleaner i mean maybe he's just at an angle but if you tilt him at the same angle it's no you can't almost tell but you can see there's a little kind of like a white smudge to clean with but this guy doesn't have that the only thing you can almost tell he has that one little spatical we can get out earlier so all right it's time to bolt in him up and close the deal here and that's it for today. We're going to wrap it up of our gauge and alarm wire remote start uh, troubleshooting. So hopefully when we mount this guy in, he'll stay at RPM state working because it's hard to really tear him apart just to get that, that wire out there. So let's go ahead and put this guy back. 
he's going to take his two main screws. So he's just like right there. These two screws there. So, and then he's done with. There he goes behind the scene. Got the two screws. Let's get the first one. And get my little Phillips. I want to try and move these guys around a lot. They're laying on their plastic tops, and I don't want to put so much pressure on the top. Okay. I didn't tighten this all the way yet because I want to get this this side. Making sure this guy get a chance to close. But before I didn't know how to take it off, I would take a pair of pliers and I was going for it. I really was. And I thought these were three plastic sections that needed to be popped out. That would have been a mistake. <laughs> I even wedged almost a razor blade somewhat. That was a little scary. Can okay, you see this one here? It's kind of stripped. It's not it's just spinning freely. It's not letting me do anything further. So again, I'll try at least direct them right. All right, I found out why it's actually dying out prematurely because actually the phone's overheating. Okay, so it has nothing to do with storage or battery because I have about 39 more uh, minutes of recording. So what I did was I straightened this guy up here. And then I also supposedly here, this guy, he's just spinning freely still. So he's kind of stripped. Again, maybe because of my reasoning. <laughs> so yeah, they're ready to go. So I'm going to put this guy probably as a backup. So I'll wrap him up neatly in the plastic bag. Keep him away for safe keeping as an external backup. Okay, so we're gonna go and wrap them up bubble wrap wise. Let's go ahead and put them away. Save them for a backup. Kind of fold them in there like this. Get them all tight in there in the bubble wrap. We'll need a tape. Tape him up. Okay, then we'll also take it from the side too. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, close the eyes. It's recording. Okay. Don't okay. close your eyes. No, we're not closing hey, close our eyes. Your eyes. I got to work. There's no closing eyes right now. Okay. Okay. Go outside. Hey. Go outside. Hey. hey oh, mommy has ice cream. Mommy has ice cream. Oh, ice cream. Yes. Okay. Yes. Close your eyes. All right, try to get my knees out. <laughs> she let me close my eyes so she could do something bad to me. More than likely, like spook me or surprise me uh, with a punch in the stomach sometimes. <laughs> she is horrible. Sometimes. Okay, so there we go. We got that guy in there. And then we're going to put him in a hard box just to make sure he's protected for future use. Okay, let me get this tape off of here. All right, so... Happy birthday. Here we go. There's no birthday here. I know. Okay. So, I think this might be a good box for it. Let's see. Actually, you know what? It's still kind of small. Actually, no, it would. Actually, hopefully it can case and close up. Semi, you can close it up. So, we'll see. At least it's protected somewhat, huh? So, we'll put them in this box. It's like a perfect size box, but unfortunately, it's not the perfect height. So, there you go. See this kind of concave like this? I'll close a little bit. That's okay, it's better than not having it, so let's go ahead and move some of this old tape out. Just we can use a box I've got from someone. Okay. There we go. We can do a full to make sure. Alright, we did. We looked at you. Yes. Okay, there you go. Cut them across. All right, so there we go. We're gonna get the other side real quick. From the top, you guys can't see it yet. There we go. Now we have our gauge cluster somewhat protected. Probably not from air to dust, but from being banged up or scratched up for no reason. There we go. We can 
probably seal this block airtight or somewhat airtight, right? We just have to close this side of it. I think this one's airtight already. So we'll close these sides here, which we can do that. There we go. Close now, somewhat. Maybe open the bottom as well. I think the bottom one's already been closed. Yeah, they are noisy. More noisier than a parrot needs to. And the pizza rat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we gotta get this side here. See, there's a gap there. Oh, let's just let's let the leftover popcorn when we get out of the way. Hey, like it. Hey, like it. We get that airtight in there. Not airtight, but at least, you know, dust tight. How about that? There we go. Nothing's going to get in the way here now. Last one here for this. There we go. Fold them in. Let them stay in. This thing has a little, seems like there's a little cut here. So maybe I can go like this too. Get the right here. Fully. I think it's going to be good on the other side as well. Oh, bingo, we're done. Yes, you know your ABC, Mama. Good for you. That's it, that's done. So, there we go. Our gauge cluster here. If I had the marker here, I would write down gauge cluster and wrap it up today. Hi guys, Michael Frenzy Wise Tour. Let me get back to my knees here. Take care.